Happy Sabbath, good morning, uh, good afternoon from wherever you're watching us from. Welcome again to this wonderful study through the book of Revelation. We are still doing the three cosmic messages. Um, we are in lesson five and today we go through an interesting lesson of the good news of the judgment. Uh, how can judgment be a good news? But before we start, I'd ask that Jaffe, please open for us with a word of prayer. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's pray. Everlasting Father, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity you've given us this day to go through uh, the lesson, the good news of the judgment. I ask that your Holy Spirit abide with us, that um, you may uh, use us to understand and handle the word effectively, that your name may be glorified uh, throughout this uh, hour. I pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, I'm joined by my wonderful team again. Um, Rumona Apio, today I'll start, then I'll go to Japheth, then Jess, and then on my right. Uh, great. Thanks, Rumona. My name is uh, Japheth uh, Rono. Praise God. My name is Jess Rono. I'm happy to be here with you today. Mm-hmm. My name is Onsongo Rafa Nyamiso. Pleasure to be here with you all. Thank you. Um, I'm also welcoming you, the viewer, from wherever you're watching us from. Uh, feel at home. Take your Bible. Take your lesson. Let's go through the study. So the good news of the judgment. I'm just wondering, how can judgment be a good news, you know? Uh, but it depends whether on which side you are on. Judgment is... Um, will be good news or bad news depending on which side you are on. For example... Um, You've had this case in court for a very long time, and now it is the time to give the judgment. If you are seeking justice, then it will be a very, very good news for you. But if justice is against you, then that's bad news. But this study focuses on the good side, on the uh, the positive side of the judgment. And we are going to read from our memory text of Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 and it says, saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made the heaven and the earth. So um, just from reading this verse that we have been reading from, from last week, it comes, it, it is not the first time where, when judgment is being mentioned, and I know we have said that in our lesson. Uh, the first time, or rather, there was the Noah's time when judgment came. Then Genesis chapter 18 talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, and there's a whole conversation between Mo, uh, Abraham and God, and judgment also comes out. And in Psalms chapter 58 verse 11, I'll just paraphrase that there is a reward for the righteous. God is the judge. So in this lesson, we are going to look at what is the judgment, who is the judge, and how does that, what effect or what impact does that have in our Christian life. So uh, to just start our lesson study, we will do it a bit different. We'll just ask questions today. We'll not do like the Monday, Tuesday, but I know we'll follow through. Um, so I'll ask this, why is judgment or why is the hour of judgment very significant in this book of Revelation? And it's especially when we talk about Revelation chapter 14, verse 7, because that is our our study. Uh, that is where we get the three angels' message. Why is it very significant? And how does that relate to the controversy between good and evil? You know, um, I used to read portions of scripture. I think in the Psalms, David often writes of this saying, mm. God, I'm looking forward to your judgment. Mm-hmm. And and you see saints in the word of God looking forward to the judgment. Even Paul often writes and says he's mm. looking forward to this judgment when, mm-hmm. when God shall stand and judge him. Mm. I didn't understand that until I went through a personal crisis mm-hmm. in my own life. Mm-hmm. And I was... Um, wrongly accused mm-hmm. and and my intentions were misinterpreted mm-hmm. i was misunderstood mm-hmm. and it just seemed like everything was against me even mm-hmm. though i knew in my heart and i knew before god mm-hmm. the way things were perceived were not the way things were truly mm-hmm. truly were and mm-hmm. and for the first time i remember going to god in prayer and Mm-hmm. and and longing for that day when I shall be vindicated. Mm-hmm. And I think 
judgment is good news especially for Christians yes. who have been mm-hmm. over for a long time mm-hmm. wrongly mm-hmm. accused mm-hmm. we see them in the book of um revelation um i think it's the last scene when we are seeing some christians under an altar who are crying and asking god how mm-hmm. long how mm-hmm. long will this continue mm-hmm. and when we, when shall we actually be judged mm-hmm. because for for many years christians have been per- perceived wrongly their actions have been tainted in the wrong way mm-hmm. and many of them long for the judgment when god will, uh, will actually bring everything to light mm-hmm. and show who, who what was re- truly wrong and what was truly right but beyond that beyond of me me long longing for the judgment me mm-hmm. longing to be vindicated and beyond christians longing to be vindicated mm-hmm. there is god who even before the us we were created was already wrongly accused yes. and mm-hmm. satan stood and before the angel said god was unjust mm-hmm. said god 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 is evil his law is unjust mm-hmm. and and for thousands of years god has been waiting for mm-hmm. the vindication of his own character Amen. while the plan mm-hmm. of redemption we look at it and we think it is about us being saved <laughs> the actually the book patrick's and prophets page 68 paragraph 2 says beyond us being saved mm-hmm. it is something much bigger it's about god being vindicated mm-hmm. that he's that he's a just god mm-hmm. that he is he's a merciful god mm-hmm. that unlike what the devil said that god is unjust god is imp- your god is god's law is not right we uh, we are seeing that in the plan of redemption mm. that in Christ going to the cross god takes a point to start vindicating himself mm. and and the book of revelation concludes this great controversy that has gone on mm. is god and just mm. that now we are going to see that god will be vindicated mm. and his character will stand to be just thank you so i rightly pick from you that the importance or rather the significance of the judgment tower is to vindicate mm. the character of God very important because right from the beginning where we studied the fall of satan or the fall of lucifer and a third of the angels god has been accused mm. and as you are telling us that it is not just about our salvation and our redemption it is also about the vindication of God's character powerful so we'll see that I know through our lesson and I'll come to you Japheth and ask according to Revelation chapter 14 verse 7 that we have read what is the relationship between the everlasting gospel and God's judgment how do these two complement each other because before the judgment there is the everlasting gospel which is the message of the first so how do the two complement each other thanks thanks mm-hmm. ramana mm-hmm. uh, so uh, the actual message itself uh, mm-hmm. in revelation 14 verse 7 mm-hmm. says fear god and uh, give glory mm-hmm. to him mm-hmm. why for the hour of, of his judgment, judgment. Mm-hmm. is come mm-hmm. um, so uh, we uh, in our past lessons we've actually been going through what it means to fear god yes. and what it means to mm-hmm. give glory to 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 god mm-hmm. and we saw that that has to do with obedience and i remember there was a question that was raised in um, the last session with regard to uh, paul's uh, gospel and the gospel that we find here mm-hmm. we know that paul's gospel and the paul's message is that uh, christ came to save sinners of whom i am chief mm-hmm. here we are told fear god and give glory to him mm-hmm. now all those things have to do with um, a, 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 our experience with god our inability to obey God's law, mm-hmm. Christ's um, a, a, a gift of grace to us, and uh, his, his, his ability to give us power to overcome. Mm-hmm. Now, where does the judgment come in? Mm-hmm. Now, uh, we are told in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23, that, um, uh, let me just turn that quickly. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 this connection with ourselves and the law of God it says the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord Mm -hmm. now if the wages of sin is death that means that that for us um, uh, uh, as we're carrying on with our lives Mm -hmm. if we do not change our ways Mm -hmm. then once we are judged and we are weighed Mm -hmm. then we will be found wanting Mm -hmm. and uh, death shall be upon us Mm -hmm. so already you can see that the judgment is connected Mm -hmm. with our experience Mm -hmm. that um, in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12 this is um, another verse we touched on in the previous session mm. uh, we are told that um, the essence of our experience here Ecclesiastes 12 verse 13 and 14 it says let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter fear mm. god which is part of the everlasting gospel mm-hmm. and keep his commandments mm-hmm. for this is the holy of man mm-hmm. why for god shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing 
So you can see that connection is 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 very close. That um, we fear God and keep His commandments. Why there, there shall come a point in time where our lives will be weighed mm. in the balances, mm. and we will be judged. Mm. Every single human being upon the face of the earth, mm. who has ever lived and whoever will live. Now mm. the good thing is that we can face this judgment boldly, mm -hmm. because we know that we have Jesus Christ who has offered us mm. that sacrifice, mm. and if we know that and we accept that, then we can fear God gladly, and we can give Him glory gladly, and know that when the hour of judgment comes we are secure mm -hmm. we are secure why because jesus christ has died for our sins because jesus christ has um, risen again and given us power to overcome mm -hmm. and day by day we are living a life of victory mm -hmm. the last session we talked about being overcomers mm -hmm. and right now as we are walking right now we can walk boldly mm -hmm. we can think boldly we can pray boldly mm -hmm. knowing that this judgment is a judgment that is in our favor mm -hmm. yeah so that the connection between the judgment and the first angel's message is that connection that is resolved by the cross. Amen. So it's so right to say that judgment will be based on the everlasting gospel. This gospel has been spread and it is not just being spread for nothing. You know when you the I'll use the parable of Jesus when the um the sower goes to sow and spread seeds wherever place they have to grow. And depending on which fruit they produce there are those that will be taken and harvested and kept, and then there are the tears, you know. So it is really to say that um, judgment is really based or dependent on how you take the first angel's message, the spreading of the everlasting gospel. Amen. It, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'll, go, I'll come to you, Raphael, and ask... Um, how does the opening of the records, because Raphael tells us that, Japheth tells us that there'll be books of judgment being opened. And I'm just asking, how does the opening of these records in heaven during judgment tower reflect on the value that God places on each human being? And again, what does this say about God's character? Because as we started, just told us that it's not just about our redemption story. It's also about the character of God on the wing balance. Mm. Uh, maybe uh, to as I come to your question, mm. to reflect on the earlier question that you asked about the judgment, mm. I think maybe we would uh, think about the judgment as a prize giving day. Yeah. At the end of uh, at the end of uh, of, a, of, a, of an academic year, mm -hmm. semester, mm -hmm. or whatever school year, mm -hmm. in every prize giving day, there are, uh, there are two kinds of people. There are those who dread that day, mm -hmm. and there are those who can't wait for it to come. Mm -hmm. Depending on how you've been, how you've performed throughout the week, how you performed through, throughout the, the the semester, throughout mm -hmm. the term, and so uh, similarly um, for us as Christians, mm -hmm. uh, in 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 the light of the everlasting gospel, because the gospel is the good news of Christ, the gospel, in fact, part of the first angel's message is that um, that judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. There is a judgment coming, but the gospel helps us to face the judgment. Mm -hmm. the, the everlasting gospel enables us to be able to stand before God justified mm -hmm. and, and, and accepted in the beloved uh, mm -hmm. with confidence, not in anything that we have done, but in what Christ has done on our amen, behalf amen. and what he continues to do mm -hmm. in us and through us. Mm -hmm. And so um, we shouldn't really be afraid of the judgment if we have uh, ascribed and we, uh, we find we have accepted the everlasting gospel, mm -hmm. which is uh, accepting a, a living and vital relationship mm -hmm. with Christ. Mm -hmm. you know, so we, can't be, we, we cannot and uh, should not be afraid of mm -hmm. the judgment. Mm -hmm. In thinking about this, uh, I was reminded of uh, Psalms chapter 73 from verse 2, where uh, David is drawing uh, an example of, uh, of, 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 of everyday life, as we said. Sometimes, you know, in this earth, the looking at the necessity of the judgment, you know, um, I think it's something that we, we need to understand because sometimes in this life, people suffer injustices. Mm. There are things that happen to people that as Jess has, uh, has inferred, sometimes you may not find justice here on earth. You may not find under perfect understanding in this earth. But th there is a judgment. The judgment is necessary mm -hmm. in that uh, it is a day in which God will balance all accounts. Mm -hmm. It is a day in which God will, God, God, God will, uh, will, will bring everything to light and, and, and everybody uh, will be uh, will be given uh, given account of the things done in the flesh. Mm -hmm. So the judgment is twofold. One, it is it it it, it the law in itself uh, ha, that by which you are judged mm -hmm. is a reflection of the judge. Mm -hmm. So even God Himself is on trial. Mm -hmm. If uh, He has put a particular standard, mm -hmm. yes. Um, 
is that standard just and uh, how does he deliver this justice mm. two we ourselves are also on trial how have we uh, lived up to the things to the commandments of god how have we lived up to to the expectations that mm. god has has given us for us to merit mm. eternal life mm. and and in all these things the gospel is a wonderful solution to all these complexities mm. the gospel opens the door for god to be both just and merciful mm. the gospel also opens the door for us to uh, not only find pardon for our sins mm. but also to to find good standing before god mm. and so uh, the everlasting gospel and the judgment are tied uh, in that aspect and david is writing uh, just uh, a thought that came as just was sharing in psalm 73 mm. if if, I, if you'll allow me to read it says mm -hmm. he writes and says but as for me my feet were almost gone my steps had well nigh slipped for I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no bands in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, neither are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride compassed them about as a chain. Violence covers them as a garment. Their eyes stand out with fatness. They have more than heart could wish. They are corrupt and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouths against the heavens and their tongue walketh through the earth. Therefore, his people return hither, and waters of a full cup are wrung out of them. And they say, How doth God know? And, there is, and is there knowledge in the Most High? Mm -hmm. He speaks about the condition of the people of our world today. You know, mm -hmm. wickedness, iniquity abounding everywhere. Nobody, it seems as if God is not doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, God tells us in the, in, the, in the Bible and He encourages us that there is a day that, is, that has been set. For the judgment of both the good and uh, and and, uh, and and the and the unjust, it says in verse 12, "Behold, these are the ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocency. For all the day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I shall offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, I was it was too painful for me." When David says, "It was difficult to live on this earth." to see how the wicked prosper, to see how sometimes justice evades uh, can, 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 can the, the way justice is, is, is given, is meted out, is, is, in an, is, an unfair, is in an unfair way because the world is unfair in a, to a, up to a particular extent. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, um, in verse 17, he says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then understood I their end. Mm -hmm. Until uh, David came to face to face with the reality of the judgment mm. then his heart was at peace he knows that eventually god will balance all accounts mm. eventually uh, true justice will be meted out mm. to all of us and so the judgment to the christian the judgment to anybody who, who who is out there seeking for justice can truly be found in god and if we uh, have um, an understanding of who god is then we know eventually though we may suffer here though we may um, we may uh, we may not get ultimate and true justice uh, meted out to us by earthly institutions and earthly earthly persons or authorities god at the end of the day will come and balance the books mm -hmm. and so uh, the question then for us is when our cases are brought before God, mm -hmm. will we then uh, be found uh, uh, just before he who justifies people mm -hmm. or will we uh, be found wanting? Mm -hmm. when we, or will we be found wanting? Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that connection is, is important mm -hmm. to show us the necessity of the judgment mm -hmm. and, 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 and its connection uh, with the everlasting gospel. Thank Amen. you. Um, mm -hmm. So what the question you had <laughs> asked maybe, I had, let me just read, uh, I, you have answered it, some of it, okay. but now, okay, before I say what, it, uh, what I wanted to say, the question was, uh, how, does the, how does the opening of the records in heaven during judgment tower reflect the value that God places on each human being? I think, um, mm -hmm. um, one thing, uh, the, the, re the books of record tell us that, mm -hmm. uh, one, that God is particular, mm -hmm. Sometimes um, I, I, I dare say that God is petty mm. and God remembers. Mm -hmm. You know, um, we serve a God who remembers. Mm. In the book of uh, Samuel, uh, First Samuel chapter 15, he tells Samuel to go tell Saul to punish Amalek for the sins that Amalek did 400 years ago mm -hmm. when he attacked Israel mm -hmm. as he was leaving Egypt. 
So God remembers and God keeps a record. And mm -hmm. there's the books of remembrance. There's a book of life, there's a book of remembrance in Malachi 3 and verse 16, mm -hmm. wherein are recorded and chronicled all the activities, all the things that we have done for God mm -hmm. and, uh, and, for, and for his cause. Mm -hmm. And so um, Sister White writes and says all these things are recorded with terrible exactness. Mm -hmm. uh, it, is a, it is a wonderful script that we ourselves, if we were to meet uh, in the judgment, we cannot, uh, we, cannot, uh, we cannot say this is an inaccurate record. Mm -hmm. Perhaps even it's better than the hands are than the records that we uh, that are put in parliament <laughs> and all these things because mm -hmm. these records are are, are, are are filed every every evening uh, by our guardian angels mm -hmm. uh, in in up in heaven and so it tells us of a God who is involved it tells us of a God who is keen mm -hmm. it tells us of a God who remembers mm -hmm. so it tells us of a God who ultimately has set a day in which uh, in which he will balance all books and 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 he will met out justice and fairness throughout all the universe. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'll just ask a question to either Jess or Japheth. Either of you can respond. Um, Raphael is telling us God remembers with terrible exactness, but David tells us that as far as the sun as far as the east is, is from, from the, the west, west mm -hmm. that is how he forgives our sins so is god like us like um i'll tell you i've forgiven you then when you wrong me and especially as women i'll remind you again <laughs> of a sin you committed against me two years ago so is that like a contrast remember we are also talking about the character of god being on trial here so I think um, mm -hmm. I, I can answer by um, uh, re referencing um, a particular uh, vision, mm -hmm. okay, more like a dream, mm -hmm. a dream that Luther had. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, uh, when Luther, Martin Luther, one of the um, early Protestants um, who really brought out the message that we are saved by faith, mm -hmm. uh, he was troubled in his mind with um, all of the wrong things that he had done mm -hmm. to other people. Mm -hmm. And this would constantly rack his mind. Mm -hmm. And so at that particular point, he had not come to that revelation, that, that understanding that we are saved simply by uh, uh, by trusting in the power of God and in the uh, sacrifice that Christ made for us. And so in his mind, he had this vision where there was a long role where the devil was figured in his mind mm -hmm. as a being that was holding on to this role and pointing out every single individual mm -hmm. uh, thing mm -hmm. that he had done. But then the devil was holding on to that role in a particular way, sort of to, to prevent it from being unrolled fully. So all that Luther could see was all his sins in terrible exactness mm -hmm. presented before him and he was so he was in so much anguish in mm -hmm. that uh, dream and then later on I believe I can't remember if it was Jesus Christ or an angel who I think it was must have been Jesus Christ who forced the hand of the of the devil to to reveal what was um, on the on the farthest end of the scroll mm -hmm. and against every single sin was found what forgiven forgiven mm -hmm. forgiven forgiven mm -hmm. and so that is the image I think that best um, uh, represents those ones who have claimed by faith the sacrifice Amen. of Christ and that is important Mm. Um, I think we should not fall into the dangerous pit of, of feeling that, yes, God is so loving that now he forgives everyone for everything. That is not true. Mm. Um, uh, the judgment does have, let's say, we can call it a bad side, mm. that if you are um, uh, uh, found in a place where you are not covered, where you are standing just before the Lord without the sacrifice of Christ, then you shall pay for all of those mm. sins uh, that you have done. Because God is just in that particular sense. Mm -hmm. But if you have by, claim, by faith claim the sacrifice of Christ, then you can be sure that no matter um, uh, uh, what your past was, mm -hmm. if you have accepted by faith and are now living with Christ, mm -hmm. then you can be sure that before, uh, uh, against every single record of your life is found, mm -hmm. forgiven. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that's why David writes in Psalms chapter 51 verses 1 to 4, I'll read, I have... Ha have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight, that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. So it is right. This is like just an echo of what you've told us that if you are not covered, then you have to. Judgment has that other bad side, and this is where David is just claiming the forgiveness. He's he's cov he's 
claiming the cover from God. You know, by this time, yes, Jesus had not died, but he's still claiming that forgiveness of God. And he says that you may be found just when you speak and blameless when you judge. And Amen. he's acknowledging that he has done sin. And that that is us sometimes, you know. David had just committed adultery, murder, and now judgment has been brought to him. And here he is just claiming his repenting. So the devil will accuse you of all the sins. And again, the devil also has every record of your sin with terrible exactness again. But for him is to use it against you, is to remind you that, Rumona, you are such a liar. Rumona, you did this and that to this person. You said so hurtful words to Jess, you know, to remind you, to make you feel guilty. But as we move, we will understand because I know um, somewhere in our lesson, maybe this one or the next one, we'll meet Joshua and see how Jesus just dealt with that when Amen. he was being accused. So we safely move to the money part, and I'll again just use question to study the, the money part, God's mercy and judgment. And I'll ask you, Jess, how does the cross reveal that God is both just and merciful? the cross of Jesus where salvation happened, how does that reveal to us that God is just and merciful? I think on one part, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 that the wages of sin is death. death. Mm -hmm. And sin is um, defined as the transgression of the law. Mm -hmm. That it means that if we break the law of God, mm -hmm. then the law will require the death of the sinner. Exactly. And on the cross, we see one who is perfect and one who has committed no sin uh, being put to death. Mm. Because sin required that us who had broken the law of God, at, at least uh, um, on the first part when Adam sinned mm -hmm. in, the, in the Garden of Eden. Mm. And now all humanity, the full seed of Adam following, has been sinful ever since. It required that one would die so that the law, the, the demands of the law may be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Because if you sin, then you're required to die. But on the cross we see um, something different happening. Not the person who has sinned dying, but another one taking the part of the sinner and dying on behalf of that sinner. And that's when, uh, again, Christ agreeing with the Father, the, the creator of the universe himself, God himself, takes the part of the sinner and comes to die on the cross. And that is where we see as, as an, 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 an author writes and says that uh, justice and mercy kisses at the, at the cross. Mm -hmm. That the demands of the law are met and, and mercy is still given to the sinner. Mm -hmm. The demands of the law that one must die. Mm -hmm. But mercy being given that the one who, who dies on that cross is not the one who mm -hmm. sinned. Mm -hmm. It is another one who dies so that mercy can be given to the one who mm -hmm. had actually sinned. Mm -hmm. That the sacrifice that was required of God is satisfied by the person of the Son of God himself. Mm -hmm. And we end, end up experiencing mercy from God because now Jesus has died on our behalf thank you thank you the demands of law is where like the cross just puts it like the cross is where mercy and law kiss each other and we keep sometimes people spread false doctrine and say that the cross abolished the law mm -hmm. we've had that so many times and just picking up from the the cross and the law, the mercy and the demands of the law. Uh, Raphael, when we read the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and, and verse 9, it says that we have been saved by grace and through faith, not of our works, lest anyone should do what should boast. And then you move to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10, it says that for we are his man workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So, what is the role of the law in our salvation, really? Mm. I, I think uh, uh, 
the, the verse that Jesus was referring to earlier was uh, Psalms 85 and verse 10, mm. where David writes and says, Mercy and truth are made together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Mm. Indeed, uh, showing that God is both just and merciful, mm. a claim which the devil uh, tried to um, to downplay. That uh, there, if because man has sinned, God sh uh, man deserves to die. But God uh, shows his love to us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ dies for us and uh, uh, the door of mercy is opened. But uh, then to answer your question, uh, what exactly is the place of the law mm. in our lives and mm. in our salvation? And in judgment. And in, in, this and, and in the judgment. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we must first of all understand what the law of God is. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see that and we understand and we see that the law, the law of a land describes what type of land that is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it's like for, like school rules mm -hmm. if I come to your school and I find that it is clean I find uh, people are orderly there's a way there's there's, there's some sort of organization mm -hmm. then uh, and I read the rules of, 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 of the school it, it tells me what type of uh, people are in this school mm -hmm. similarly the law of God describes the character of God mm -hmm. The law of God describes the character of God. The constitution of Kenya describes mm. what type of people Kenyans are. Mm. That's why maybe you find uh, certain, uh, uh, certain articles of, 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 of law are, are, are really frowned upon. For example, like um, the LGBTQ rights and things mm. like that. Because they tend to sort of... Uh, are, are the, the laws of a land are a reflection of the values mm -hmm. of the type of people, mm -hmm. of the character of those people. Mm. Similarly, the law of God is a transcript of his character. And so if we understand the law of God as his character, then we should know uh, it also helps us to understand our interaction mm -hmm. with the law of God. Mm -hmm. uh, the law of God, in essence, uh, is, 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 is a transcript of even who and how we are supposed to be. Uh, the, it, uh, Paul writes and says the law is a mirror. Mm -hmm. by which we look and see where we are how do we look uh, how uh, where am i uh, am i am i am i christ like am i like god or where have i fallen short and it and, and it uh, and looking at the law then uh, by looking at the law none of us can be proud by looking at the law none of us can 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 can, can be high and and lifted up and lofty and say that we we have reached its standard but the law will always drive us to Christ. Mm. The law will always show us that indeed all have fallen short, all have sinned mm. and fallen short of the glory of God. And uh, the glory of God here is the character of Christ once mm. again. Mm. The law constantly redirects us to our need and our necessity for Christ. Mm. The law tells us that we are in trouble in the judgment. Mm. The law reminds us that we are feeble. It tells us of our need for the Holy Spirit, mm. our need to confide and to trust and to obey in God uh, and, 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 and to apply the merits of Christ in our lives mm. day by day. Mm. And so that I believe is uh, the necessity of the law. It tells us the, the character of God. We serve a holy God, mm. a high God, mm. and, uh, and, uh, and it tells us of our need for Christ and uh, our need in Christ to find right standing before God. Amen. Thank you. So, um, and Ellen White says that when we stand before God, we should be led to humility and mm. deep searching of the heart because we are standing with filthy garments mm. and it's only Christ who can wash us. It, we depend on his righteousness. We depend on his. We are really not self-reliant, not self-sufficient. We are really depending on Christ. So, um, yes, we have been saved by grace, but we, the grace does not demand or does not let us stay in the position we were in. We have to accompany this grace with good works. Good works not to save ourselves, but because we are governed by the laws. Like Raphael puts it, it's like a school. You have rules. You have to stay within the rules of the school. We are not saved by our, our works, but we are showing, we are returning. It is like living the Christ-centered life that we talked about last week. So we move to the Tuesday. To the, unless someone has something to say on the Monday part, uh, we can move to the Tuesday. Okay, so the Tuesday part of mag uh, magnific Magnificent Sin. Ish, I was going to say the other one. <laughs> <laughs> the magnificent scene. So, um, by this, I'd ask you, Japheth, um, what is the relationship between the book of Daniel and Revelation? Because here, we're just looking at the pro these two books as prophetic, Daniel and Revelation. And it's really 
nearly impossible to read Revelation minus Daniel, Daniel minus Revelation. What is really just the relationship between these two and how do they reveal the, the events of the last day, the last day events, if I may? Uh, mm. Thank you so much. Mm. Um, so, uh, uh, in general, the book of Revelation is deeply connected, not just with uh, Daniel, mm. but with... Um, the entirety of the Old Testament. Exactly. Uh, in fact, uh, if, if you took, do a, a study of the verses mm. of the book of Revelation, you find that two-thirds of them are, um, are alluded from the Old Testament. Yes. Uh, mm. uh, often, so for instance, in mm. Revelation chapter 13, mm. there is a particular creature mm. that has, um, uh, it says that its body is like a leopard, it has the mouth of a lion and the feet of a bear. You find that in the book of Daniel. Mm -hmm. You find in another part of Revelation, chapter um, uh, 6, you find um, uh, uh, four horsemen. You find that in the book of Zechariah. Mm -hmm. you know? So, like often, there's a very strong connection. Mm -hmm. And there's an especially strong connection between Daniel and, and Revelation. Revelation. Uh, yeah. Especially in this wise. Mm -hmm. In the book of Daniel, chapter 7, you have a scene of judgment. Mm -hmm. Daniel, chapter 7, um, uh, there's a description of all manner of beasts and all manner of creatures. Uh, there's a creature that... Um, comes out of the sea that has that's a lion that has eagle wings that's Daniel chapter 7 from verse 1 onwards and then afterwards the second creature that comes out mm. which is um, a, a bear with um, uh, that's lopsided mm. that has three ribs in its mouth mm. and then afterwards there's a leopard that has four heads and then there's a great uh, and terrible interesting creature and then afterwards after that description uh, in the book of Daniel you have a, a, a strange vision um, uh, that's described, Daniel chapter 7, reading verse uh, 9, it says, um, after that description of those uh, f four beasts, the, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the strange creature that had uh, ten, ten horns, um, you have this description, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool, and the throne and his throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels like burning fire. So it's a it's it's a, it's a very terrible and very uh, but, and by terrible here that's Old Testament and uh, 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 um, old time English. Terrible is like very, it's just uh, remarkable, you know, remarkable and amazing. And uh, verse ten, a fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Th uh, th thousand thousands ministered unto him ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him the judgment was set and the books were opened and then we are told um, in, in verse 13 I saw in the night visions uh, one like the son of man came with the clouds and came to the ancient of days and they brought him near before him so you can see that it's almost like um, a, a courtroom session mm -hmm. that there is the father the son comes then mm -hmm. then there is a huge host of mm -hmm. ten thousand times ten thousand witnesses and that is a description of a judgment just after the description of these strange and interesting creatures. Mm -hmm. Now, if you study the book of uh, uh, um, Daniel, we actually fold, uh, told um, Daniel chapter 7 verse 17 that these great beasts which are for the four that I described, the lion, etc., are four kings which shall rise out of the earth one after the other. Mm -hmm. and, but the saints of, of, of the Most High shall take the kingdom and they possess the kingdom uh, forever, even forever and ever. So that is a description of what of what will happen at the very end once the judgment is finished, etc. Every every score has been settled. Every like um, not score, more like um, everything in the judgment has been cleared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, 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 we are taken from a, a point in history where there are kingdoms one after another rising, mm -hmm. and then a judgment is set. Then the judgment um, uh, 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 establishes justice, and then there is everlasting. Uh, harmony. Mm -hmm. Now obviously we know that um, right now things are still going on um, there's a lot of conflict and commotion scenes mm -hmm. in the world mm -hmm. so clearly we are, we are not yet at that point of forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So we are still in that particular point when, when the judgment has just been set. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, uh, at this particular point now, we find um, uh, uh, the Son of Man sits and then begins judging. Uh, the, uh, we are told there, uh, uh, begins judging um, uh, um, what the, the beasts and those creatures have done. So that is part of that judgment that is going on. And that judgment, we know in the very end, is in favor of the saints. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, to, to answer your question, I believe I answered your question, mm -hmm. the strong connection is that judgment we've been describing in Revelation 14. Mm -hmm. These are the descriptions now that we find in yeah. Daniel 7. Yeah. These are the details mm -hmm. of, um, of that very terrible and great and interesting mm -hmm. scene.
thank you when you say uh, there'll be an everlasting harmony then just makes me understand why this Tuesday part we are talking about a magnificent scene because now this courtroom is not just the courtroom that we are used to but it is a courtroom that is everlasting a judgment that is forever and ever and it is a judgment that will be a happy one especially for the righteous and thank you for that and I just ask this um, you know, how does the judgment scene depicted in the book of Daniel chapter 7 uh, highlight the triumph of truth, justice, and righteousness? And what is the ultimate destiny of God's faithful people? Mm. I think, honestly, it's quite exciting when yeah, you read it. Yeah. That on one part, mm. you can just see, um, and it references what Raphael was speaking of. You can just see um, Daniel beholding secular governments mm -hmm. leading mm -hmm. um and 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 ruling this earth mm -hmm. and they do not rule with justice mm -hmm. they do not rule with righteousness exactly. and so he's ki seeing one kingdom ruling for many years mm -hmm. hundreds of years and then another kingdom mm -hmm. takes over hundreds of years still does not see any justice mm -hmm. then sees another kingdom and so as one kingdom progresses after the other, it's becoming worse and worse. And, worse. and the condition of humanity mm. degenerates over time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when it, the situation looks all hopeless, God poses and says, but there's a judgment. Yeah. And then describes the judgment scene, which is so marvelous and beautiful. See, thousands and thousands of angels. And in my mind, I just see them in white and with trumpets. And mm. It's just so glorious. Mm. And they come to the Father and before the throne of the Father. Then we, God takes time to describe in da Daniel 7 the situation of, I mean, the rulership of the little horn. And again, it's terrible. We, we are just seeing him actually mm -hmm. now even taking the place of God upon the face mm -hmm. of the earth. It can be quite discouraging for a Christian who's holding on to God. And for mm -hmm. thousands of years, mm -hmm. God never rules. Mm -hmm. Righteousness, truth never triumphs. Mm -hmm. It seems so. Mm -hmm. Then God, after describing the, um, in now 7.26, he said, he tells Daniel, as though to pause again and say, but Daniel, the judgment shall sit mm -hmm. and this person will be charged. It's, mm -hmm. it's quite beautiful. Now, in the book of Romans, God ends up giving us the conclusion of how it shall be. Romans chapter 1 starts with Paul describing the condition of the earth. And it is the condition of the earth um, it, it, before um, God destroyed the earth during the time of Noah. Mm -hmm. But we know these sins will be the ones that will be repeated before the second coming of Christ. And he says people will do wicked things. He says, it says... It, it, continues on to describe that even these things that we are seeing today, LGBTQ, it will repeat itself mm. that men will corrupt themselves, women will defile themselves, people will forget the knowledge of God, mm. people will despise the things of God, the light that has been revealed to, to us and the situation does look very hopeless, people will be proud, boasters, inventors of evil mm. things, you know right now evil has increased to the level where people even have devised new ways and mm -hmm. better ways to commit evil and to mm -hmm. commit sin and to remain mm -hmm. in it. Then in chapter 2, Paul, just the same way Daniel was designed, Paul starts with the judgment sin and mm -hmm. said, but don't worry, you know, hold fast, God shall bring a judgment. Mm -hmm. And he gives what shall happen. Now verse 2, he says, but we are sure, he says, we are sure, we are certain that the judgment of God, it is according to truth, against them which commit such evil mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. and then when he speaks about what shall happen to those when god will judge in verse 6 he says um he says he will render to every man according to his deeds mm -hmm. to them who by patient continuance by well by in well doing seek for glory and honor and immortality what shall he give them he will give them eternal life mm -hmm. but unto them that are contentious and do not obey truth but obey unrighteousness indignation and wrath what shall he give them he will give them tribulation and and anguish upon every soul of man that doeth evil of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. So it is quite exciting news.
news for the righteous person yes. that are you, have you been righteous mm -hmm. you know been going on long and and obeying the word of god and obeying the law of god and it looks in vain god has promised the judgment mm -hmm. and the promise to you is that eternal life is assured are you wondering why the wicked are prospering you know asking god how long the judgment is the good news to you today that God shall come and see it. But are you continuing in wickedness? Are you continuing to commit sin? Let me tell you, judgment indeed shall come. But to you who is continuing in sin, then it shall be tribulation and anguish. And so the call today is to turn to God so that judgment will remain to be good news to you. Mm, amen. Thank you. The, the ultimate destiny of God's faithful people mm. is the best judgment like justice mm. if i may use because like you say we live in a world where there are actually commissions formed truth and justice commission but mm. this justice this truth is never never found but with god it will be found thank you for that so we move to the wednesday part and uh, I'll read from the book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 1. And it says, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, I will show you things which must take place after this. Remember, this, uh, this chapter just comes right after the seven churches have been addressed and the most immediate one is the lukewarm church so this verse that uh, when john is being told come uh, come up here i will show you things which must take place after this i will focus on the the phrase where come up here the first phrase what does that mean what does it signify Raphael? what does come up here in revelation chapter 4 verse 1 signify uh, indeed, um, in in, his, in essence, uh, Christ is inviting um, is inviting um, the revelator here, John, mm -hmm. uh, and opening up to him the scenes of heaven. Mm -hmm. He's opening up to him a scene in heaven in which um, he's he's sort of demystifying uh, and, 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 and 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 revealing uh, to to him. Mm -hmm. um, the, th the sins that are happening up there. He says, indeed, come up hither, and I will show the things which must be hereafter. Mm. So he's, he's uh, in essence, it, it shows um, a change in the revelator's visions, mm. a change in, uh, in sins from the things that were happening on earth and the, and the, the condition of the churches throughout the ages. Now uh, the scene is changing from, uh, from the earth. Now John is transported to heaven, mm -hmm. and he sees... Uh, a heavenly, a, a heavenly setting, almost mm -hmm. akin to what uh, we have uh, discussed in Daniel, mm. and so the come up hither simply uh, indicates to us a change. That change from uh, the vision here on earth mm. to the to the visions up in heaven. Amen. Mm. So thank you, and uh, Japheth, Raphael has told us we are now getting into another glimpse, glimpse of heaven, and we meet the twenty-four elders, right? So. Would you please just explain to the viewer who's been struggling to understand? Because we hear in songs that the 24 elders will bow. Who are these 24 elders? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, um, and um, the author even of, um, in the lesson, uh, mm -hmm. for those of us who are following the lesson, even um, informs us that there is, um, there are... Uh, a, a, a different uh, perspectives of who the twenty-four elders mm. are, but I think there are some key issues that are uh, important that we can de de derive from them by reading from what is found in the scriptures. So the twenty-four elders are found in Revelation chapter four, reading uh, verse four. It says, "And round about the throne were four and twenty seats, and upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiments, and they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded lightnings and thunderings and voices, and there were seven lamps of fire." So, uh, and then in verse um, uh, uh, in verse nine, we are told, um, "When the four, when when those beasts, uh, the four beasts that are on the throne, give glory and honor and thanks." Uh, to him that sat on the throne who lives forever the four and twenty elders fall down before him and sat on the throne and worship him that lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying you are worthy O lord to receive glory and honor and power for you have created all things and and for thy pleasure they are which were created so these four and twenty uh, creatures um are beings that are 
constantly giving glory to God. And I think for me, the, the, the greatest and the most um, wonderful thing that I find there is the fact that heaven is full of the praise and mm. honor of God. Amen. And that, um, you know, we normally think of trying to make heaven on earth. You know, uh, if you walk around the streets, sometimes there are all those nice placards that are, you know, mm. like, like, like uh, Jesus is here mm. or, you know, Jesus is present in this mm -hmm. home or something like that. Um, if Jesus is really present in our lives uh, day by day, I think what is present in heaven, that constant praise and glory and adoration to God mm. will, will characterize our experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So the 24 elders here bring up the aspect of praise and Raphael tells us that we have moved from the visions here on earth to a vision in heaven and now we are just getting into the into the atmosphere of heaven and i remember when you were starting this study there's a time there's a day um i think it's the first or the second lesson uh when we're talking about the book of revelation and why people don't like reading it and you say that it is a thrilling i think this is now the thrilling part yeah, true, true. <laughs> for me so we move to the book of revelation chapter five um chapter five verse eight to twelve and it says now when we when he had taken the scroll the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense which are the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and you have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on earth. It just hit my mind that before reading that those verses, we should have started from verse 1. So, so I'll start from verse 1, then just come there. I'm still in the book of Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who had sat on the throne a scroll, scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice. Who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals? And no one in heaven or, or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. As I say, amen. Coming the thrill that Japheth had talked about, and I'll just ask, um, why do this? Uh, sorry, let me just uh, refresh my question. The what is the scroll mentioned in Revelation chapter five, and why is it significant? If I may start from there, Raphael, you want to go that? <laughs> what um. what is the scroll? I think many many uh, theologians and uh, and uh, and readers of of, of, uh, of Revelation chapter five mm. have interpreted uh, that um, in the olden days, like title deeds used mm. to be like scrolls. Mm. So uh, many have likened this like to the title deed to the earth, and uh, and, and and it is only Christ who mm. has merited uh, mm. to rightfully um, own the earth because we 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 owe we are we are god's choice in mm -hmm. that we are his by creation and secondly by redemption mm. so um we see only the lamb who was worthy only christ who came and died who shed his blood in essence he, he sort of opened those th that scroll by his own blood mm. by the merits of his blood by Amen. that which he had done mm. and so uh, uh in, in in holding that scroll and, and in opening it uh, uh opening it he in essence has also opened heaven mm. for us mm. he has opened heaven for us and an opportunity for us to enter into salvation and so Amen. that is uh, that is my interpretation my the significance of uh, the opening of the scroll to me mm. thank you Japheth, what do you think is the significance of the scroll I think uh, 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 if, if you read it here, it says, um, mm. verse 2, a strong angel proclaimed with a loud voice of Revelation chapter 5, mm. Revelation 5 verse 2, who is worthy to open the book and loose the, uh, the seals thereof? Mm. And then no one was found in heaven or in earth. Mm. In heaven or in earth, neither under the earth, who was able to open the book or look uh, um, on it. And I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look on it. And then afterwards, 
uh, we um, we find um, one of the elders saying, "Weep not." for Jesus Christ, the lion of the tribe of Judah, mm -hmm. um, uh, has Sorry. prevailed. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? Um, when it says weep not, and they say, look, uh, 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 there's, there's, there's a vision of who? Of a lamb as it had been slain. Mm -hmm. So, which is obviously Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and also my brother was saying, that because of what Christ did for us, mm -hmm. because of the, the sacrifice of Christ, mm -hmm. he became worthy to open then this scroll. scroll. And mm -hmm. that is of huge, huge significance. Mm -hmm. Because, um, uh, uh, as our brother said, uh, this represents our destiny as, as, as God's people mm -hmm. and, and our future. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and if, if uh, Christ could not have prevailed and given us our future back and redeemed us back, mm -hmm. then all would have been lost. Yeah. But to really praise and glorify God that he was able to do that. In fact, like all of heaven that was previously praising and glorifying God mm -hmm. was actually hushed mm -hmm. because no one could, was found worthy to, to um, open this scroll. But now someone was found and that person was Jesus Christ. Yeah. So actually we can... Mm -hmm. um, we, like we can see the significance of this scroll and again uh, it says that it was sealed uh, we inside and outside so like in that scroll um inside was written something outside written something that's actually a description of as our brother said how title deeds used to have been uh, um, uh, figured and they were sealed with seven seals mm. and and only the kinsman who was able to have redeemed his people would would have um, been able to unloose and break that uh, scroll. So Jesus Christ, our own elder brother, our kinsman, was mm -hmm. able to do this thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was able to do it because he did. He completed the work of salvation. Amen. 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 As a human being, fully so, not even an angel could yes, have done that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Um, Jess, what do you think is the significance of the scroll? Mm. Um, I think m m even besides like going through and um, understanding like what it is, it's just what happens when a scroll is open yes. opened mm. helps us to understand what they are mm. and what is their significance because mm. um of course it's not part of the study today but as each scroll is being opened yes. in now chapter six yeah, you start yeah. seeing mm. events being described mm -hmm. about the condition of 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 the of the church mm. from god's perspective yes um and and how things progress and how the church the the, the church um purity or impurity progresses over mm. time and over the years mm. and the church being Christ's bride, mm -hmm. the church being the, 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 the bride that Christ has purchased with his own blood. Amen. And mm -hmm. it means that he's the only one worthy as the groom mm -hmm. to describe its condition fully mm -hmm. and to be the only one who has the merit or the right to be able to now cleanse it and save it. Mm -hmm. So he starts describing the condition of his own church as the seals are being opened. Mm -hmm. And we know that only a groom has the right mm. to uncover the bride. For example, yes. as Christ <laughs> starts uncovering the condition exactly. of his own bride. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I think what is also for me quite exciting is that when it first starts describing it, mm. it does not say, and therefore we beheld, and I turned, and I, John, after weeping, I saw a king walking in majesty and in, 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 a, in a purple robe, and I knew there was someone. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. It does not say that he saw someone seated on a throne. We, we are told we see a lamb slain. Mm -hmm. And every time the Bible describes the word, the word, the word a lamb that is slain, we think of it when a sacrifice is being offered. A lifeless, humble, uh, I mean not a lifeless, uh, an innocent, humble creature being taken to, to the slaughterhouse. In Isaiah, Christ is described as that lamb that wa went into the slaughterhouse without uttering a word. In John chapter 1, we we Christ is described as the lamb, not the one that judges the world harshly, mm -hmm. but the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. Every description of the word lamb is usually very comforting to a Christian. Mm -hmm. And to imagine now when the church is being judged, when the, when the, the records of the church are being reviewed, mm -hmm. they are not being reviewed by a king, mm -hmm. They're being reviewed by an innocent lamb that has carried and taken the sins of the world upon amen, it. Quite amen. encouraging. Amen. Very encouraging. Amen. But we are coming to the tail end of our discussion this morning. And I just have a question to all of us in this panel. And my question will be, what, the, what role does prayer play in our defense during judgment and at the end of the world? Because we study a whole prayer in 
Psalms 51. And also before that, uh, there are two prayers that I really love reading, Psalms 51 and Daniel chapter 9. And these are deep prayers, very deep prayers of confession. And judgment has always been is they are either preceding judgment or after judgment you know so what does the role what is the role of prayer because most of the time when you are praying it's usually just for the for our daily bread you know for the things that we need but how can we just now move from praying about our daily bread and to you to to allow play, prayer play the role of just drawing us closer to god and in regards to judgment mm -hmm. Who wants to go first? <laughs> uh, okay, yeah, mm. I, I can try. Mm. I can try and say that um, uh, prayer, mm. uh, I think uh, there's that oft read verse in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, mm. where it says we can come boldly. Yes. Why? Because of what is in verse 14, that mm. Christ, um, uh, our, our elder brother, our kinsman, the high priest now, mm. is, uh, uh, is, is actually interceding on our behalf mm. in heaven. Mm. And, and if we can do that, and we know that there's a judgment, yes. Mm -hmm. And we know that, yes. Uh, 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 our lives are being weighed in the balance. That mm. is Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13, 14. Mm -hmm. We know that. Mm. But if we, 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 we can have faith claim that um, that the sacrifice of Christ was, was done on our behalf and we are living with Jesus. We know in First John chapter 1, verse uh, 5, it says... Um, verse 7 it says if we walk in the light as he is in the light mm -hmm. we have fellowship one with another and the blood of jesus christ his son cleanses us from all sin if we have all these things in mind then we can when we are praying we can pray yes for forgiveness mm -hmm. as you said we can pray for victory because mm -hmm. we are constantly being uh, 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 accosted by the, the devil mm -hmm. and by the flesh in the world mm -hmm. and we can pray even for comfort and peace of mind because the enemy as you said in the beginning of the lesson mm -hmm. occasionally will even just make us feel guilty for mm -hmm. things that we know we have got Mm. And we, they, they were wrong. They were wrong. Mm. But you know that we have pl we have led them before the Lord. We, we can pray for comfort. We can pray for an increase of our faith. Mm. That we have an open access for God to just you know to handle all of our faith. Mm. And, and and we can pray as we saw in Hebrews chapter four, verse sixteen, boldly. Amen. Amen. Jess. Um, the Bible in the book of Second Corinthians chapter three, verse eighteen. Um, says that by beholding him mm. we become we changed become. Mm. and we are transformed into mm. his likeness Amen. day by day from glory to, to glory. glory. I think prayer gives us an opportunity mm -hmm. to behold God. Mm -hmm. And in beholding him, we are changed from glory to glory to be more like him, mm -hmm. to love the things he likes, mm -hmm. to love holiness, to mm -hmm. desire holiness. Mm -hmm. And I think as far as we are living in a wicked world, mm -hmm. as we are living surrounded by unrighteousness, surrounded by sin, mm -hmm. we will never truly appreciate the judgment and a desire for holiness unless you are spending time with God in prayer. Amen. It is as we spend mm -hmm. time with him, you will start seeing, oh my goodness, the world around me is so sinful. Mm -hmm. I just want more time with God mm -hmm. in prayer. And as you spend more time with him, you, you long for the judgment. You long for the day this, th this earth will be cleansed of sin. Mm -hmm. You long for the day when you shall be united with God in heaven to live in a holy atmosphere. You know, spirit of prophecy says that it is possible in these last days for some people to be walking upon the earth though they are working on a sinful earth they are breathing the atmosphere of heaven Amen. and that is true prayer mm -hmm. i think as we breathe the atmosphere of heaven mm -hmm. we will long for the judgment we will mm -hmm. desire it more mm -hmm. and we will work for god that when the judgment shall happen many more will be saved and many more will love the judgment just as much as we love it amen amen thank amen. you amen. yes Raphael? i think mm -hmm. uh, as uh, just like to um add uh, to what my uh, what uh, my able panelists have also uh, said and say that uh, by prayer is a wonderful privilege mm. it's a privilege in which uh, when we are bowing down to pray or kneeling down or whatever posture we we take when we are praying mm. uh, we generally need to know that we are communing with god the highest authority that we can ever uh, come into communion with and so it's a wonderful privilege. And in essence, you're talking to the judge uh, before, uh, before, um, before, the, before the judgment. And it helps us, as Jess says, uh, because sometimes in prayer, it's not, it's not only about speaking, but also listening. Sometimes even the Spirit speaks to us mm -hmm. through prayer. Sometimes he whispers. Sometimes certain things, certain convictions you will only get 
only if you commune with God in prayer. Mm. When you wrestle, as Jacob wrestled uh, through a night or through a day or through whatever event that you're going through. And so uh, prayer is a wonderful privilege and uh, it's a powerful privilege which we ought to indulge in very often and the way you look forward at the end of a day to talking to your, to a friend or at the end of the week talking to a friend and and, and breaking it breaking down the integrities of your day mm -hmm. the the complexities the, its joys its highlights similarly we should always uh, look to begin our days with god and uh, transit through them with god and even end them with god uh with prayer with thanksgiving with praise uh even with our supplications but also listening to god uh through prayer thank you thank you so much um it's been a wonderful discussion, the good news of the judgment. One thing that came into my mind when I was studying this lesson is what a comfort it is to know that this judge that is coming to judge you knows you. He's been there. He's walked through that road. So, you know, it is usually just comforting that I know someone who knows someone. For us now, it is not I know someone who knows someone in a um, earthly or a worldly perspective but in a heavenly perspective and we have glimpsed through heaven and we have talked and we have realized that judgment is good news and especially for the righteous so if you're doing good keep doing good don't give up don't feel like it is taking too long even daniel asked lord how long and i know you are also asking yourself how long in the face of persecution how long in the face of sicknesses in the face of death in the face of every evil thing how long judgment is coming and the righteous shall be rewarded with crowns and white robes. I can't wait for that day. I'll pray to close this session. Thank you, Jesus, for just allowing us to know the good plans that you have planned for us. Indeed, Lord, you can be trusted. And if you showed John all these things, Lord, it was not in vain. You are not man that should lie. We pray that, dear Lord, we may be drawn closer and closer to you, that we may look upon you and not look upon the things of the earth. Help us, Lord, to be to be thankful every day for just the gift of salvation and also just take upon the privilege of salvation and work towards it. I pray this trusting and believing in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.